we come back on. Um, did you? I mean, did you have a sense of what the feel of the film was like? It's kind of like it's, it's, it's joined the list of films like Solaris for me, and you know, Interstellar, this sort mm -hmm. of like psychological sci-fi. Is right. that kind of how you imagined it? Y yeah, so, I mean, well, so definitely psychological, but also very emotional because it's told through through the, uh, Amy's character and through her eyes or her lens, and it's a very insular, small story. Um, is how it always felt. And the surprise to me, <clears throat> ultimately, is how big and global it turned out to be. Um, I always thought it was just sort of like, you know, me and Amy in a room, or our characters in a room talking to, or trying to speak with yeah. an alien force. And uh, it's turned into this really giant, giant, giant film. It's, you know, it's a, that's where the director came in and yeah. really kind of rocked my world yeah. in a good way. And your character is like really psyched at the beginning, you know, when he's, get, he's got this opportunity to go and meet the, you know, do first contact. Right. Like How do you think you <coughs> would fare? Would you be <coughs> as pumped to do that? Or you think, mm. I don't know. Th to me, that was just an instinctual thing that, you know, tr trying to take a guy that's all about mathematics and, and, and physics and science and how do you make that emotional? It's usually very, very heady sort of material. So I really, that was one access point into making him emotional creature yeah. himself, right? He's, he's dealing with mathematics and binary, zeros and ones and blah, 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 blah. So just that, the reaction to you know, the alien force just being like excited like a kid is yeah. like, you know, sort of how, using that as like an emotional thing, using a sense of humor. That was a great challenge for me. It's like, how do I take this character and make him accessible? So people then now listen to well, what the heck he's talking about because it's very, really, maybe not so interesting for people to, to listen to. Yeah. Um, so using emotion was, was sort of like the trick and the key to get into this character. Yeah, and it's also, it, gets the, it gets you thinking about if this ever happened, you know, how would we as humans, what would, who, would, who would we send up to meet the, you know, the yeah. who would you nominate if you... Right, right, yeah, exactly. Seriously, if you could think of somebody. Oh, I, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, it's, we're, we're speaking in a vacuum here. <laughs> that, that aliens <laughs> did land. <laughs> like, okay, well, <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, yeah. Well, I also liked about your character as well when he comes back from that first contact. Yeah, having been so hyped up for it, and then he, he's sick, isn't he? And that kind of really humanized him as well. Sure, you sure. Know, that was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> is that something? I mean, is that something you worked on with the director, or is that in the script? Or uh, there's a, there's a lot of things we worked on to that we spoke about before uh, we started filming, and um, Dini and I both. We talked about the things that we already kind of discussed about how do we really kind of humanize him in a way and and he liked all those sort of that, that approach to to the character who could also you know on the on paper could be very sort of not very maybe interesting to watch because a lot of information is really yeah. kind of technical and but so yeah we found different ways to 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 um make him human you know essentially and it worked out well yeah. okay thanks very much yeah Cheers. thank you man. Wrap it up. Thank you. Cheers. so just in venice for one day yeah, I'm yeah. leaving tonight. Okay, okay. You're your PR team are uh, like busy out there, so you're doing the whole whole shebang today with yeah. all the world's press. Um, so I believe you're on the, the set of Blade Runner. Yeah, exactly. At the moment, that's keeping you busy, I imagine. Very busy. <laughs> very, very busy. Well, it's quite a journey. Is it? I mean, is you, are you feeling any pressure at all to follow in the footsteps of Ridley Scott? Was there any sort of anticipation? It's. A, it's a, I think it's a. I always thought. Even if I w when I was not attached, the first time I heard about the Blade Runner project, I, I thought it was like a, uh, the idea to make a sequel to the original Blade Runner. I thought was like a fantastic and a mad idea. I mean, it's like I think it's like to when you have a master uh, best, ma such a masterpiece to try to make a f it's very difficult and and uh, insane task. And and uh, we are in that insanity right now. We are embracing. All the risk and the, and the chance of a success are very narrow, and that is so exciting, you know. And uh, we are uh, having, having a fantastic crew, and um, I'm very inspired, uh, specifically by my actors right now that are doing a great, 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 great job. Yeah, and obviously you've got Harrison Ford on board as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. How is he uh, not behaving? <laughs> and how how is it working with him and bringing him bringing him into the uh, you know? New world that you're creating, but that that uh, is part of the project since the the, the birth of this project is uh, involved. So uh, uh, it's uh, 
I cannot talk about that, unfortunately, but uh, I will say that it's a, for me, it's a, it's a, I never thought that I would have the privilege to work with him. It's a, it's a gigantic thing for me yeah. to, to work with such a, he's just such a gentleman. Yeah. So you're obviously not somebody that shies away from a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about the, you know, what do you look for in a project? And what is it that sort of sparks your enthusiasm? Like the, for, for a rival, for example. But the notion of risk is something that uh, always uh, deeply attracts me. Uh, the idea that uh, the, the chances of success are uh, singular, like narrow, and that uh, it's something that uh, creativity, I think, is based on risk. I think that the uh, only way to try to make something good is to flirt with disaster. You must, you must, uh, I mean, work on the walk on the edge of, uh, of failure in order to succeed. I think it's like, a, and it's a very dangerous uh, position. Uh, for me, but I, I'm just, I'm, I feel alive when I do that. And, and uh, Arrival is a project that uh, uh, had that, those kind of, uh, I felt that that kind of uh, quality, <laughs> which the difficulty. It's a, Arrival is by far the most difficult film I've made uh, so far. Yeah. Uh, the equilibrium between the, the intimate journey of the main character and uh, the, all the, uh, the difficulty to create another civilization, uh, another way of thinking, another way of, uh, of uh, another world. Uh, there, the aliens are coming from uh, another dimension. So it's like uh, for me, it was very difficult to do. Have you always had that drive? I mean, because you've obviously you've made quite a successful career uh, to date, and uh, is that is that drive is that what you attribute your success to? <coughs> I I started to make movies in a, in. A in the 80s and I stopped at one point. I made two feature films and I was not happy with what I was doing and I felt that I had to go back to school and I did. And I went and um, I stopped making movies more maybe six or seven years. Just going back trying to find uh, creative food and to, to try to um, evolve uh, uh, as a filmmaker. At that time, I was saying to myself, I can be a filmmaker without making films. You know, I need to evolve. I need to grow up to, uh, and not before making a movie again, I needed to, to, to change some things. And when I came back, I came back very hungry, you know, with a lot of uh, drive and a lot of, uh, and it happened that uh, the project went very fast one after the other. I was not expecting that at all, but it's just the way things happen. I felt in love with some projects and, uh, and the pacing uh, was uh, quite strong. I mean, I think uh, uh, in 2017, when I will finish Blade Runner, I will have made five movies in six years, which I think is not a good idea. <laughs> I think it's too much uh, <laughs> fast. I will slow down after. I want to make because I, uh, I need more time to digest and to create those worlds. It, uh, it's uh, the basing to is too heavy right now. I, okay. I will slow down a little bit. I must say. Oh, well, thank you very much for talking to okay, me. I wish okay. I could talk to you for more. For okay, okay. I really enjoyed the film. I love it. So um, you're here with two films. We're recording. You're here with two there films. You go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yes, what's I that am. like? As a, I mean, is it easy to switch from you know cap to cap? And, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I'm really proud and excited about both films. I, I think they're very different. So, um, you know, in talking about them, I I'm, have a different relationship with each of the films and each of the film's directors and casts, and, um, but, but all very positive. And are you here from start to finish? Uh, no, just through this week. Just through, yeah, just through they, this they week. Ah, that's yeah. good then. Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, I, what I loved about um, this film, Arrival, was the, the fact that these guys aren't humanoids. You know, when yeah. you think about first contact, you think it's going to be the, you know, the Steven Spielberg kind of Exactly. Type. So is that something that, you know, appealed to you when you got involved or what, what was it that uh, you know, jumped off the page? Um, I think for me it was, it, was the, it was the human element of the story, really. Um, the sci-fi stuff sort of was happening around sort of the stuff I was interested in. Mm -hmm. um, I loved the sci-fi element, but I think I was more interested in um, the emotional component and that there was such a heavy emotional through line in a sci-fi movie was really fascinating to me. Yeah. And then when I got to the end of the script, I went, what just happened? I need to go back and now read it knowing what I know uh, yeah. to get a different understanding. That's right. And I'd like to watch it again as yeah. well, you know, without giving anything away. I know. Obviously. It's always, <laughs> it's one of those films like you can't talk about really until you yeah, see it. And absolutely. Then, yeah. 
Um, and also as well, I mean, when you think about first contact, you just think about the handshake and then it's over. And this really goes into detail about yeah. um, the complexity of what it would probably be like. Exactly. Or possibly be like. Yeah, and, right. and based on sort of what we're trying to, you know, if they seem to be trying to communicate with us, that's a totally different thing than, than feeling an aggression from them. Because yeah. um, I think just by nature of them arriving, sorry, not to upon the title, but yeah. the nature of them arriving creates what we can interpret as a conflict, yeah. you know. Yeah, and your character's ever so brave as well. Obviously, she shows that, that she has some fear, but you know, yeah. how do you think you would fare? I would not fare well. I, would not, <laughs> I wouldn't make it, I would not make it even, I, I don't even want to get in the helicopter to get there. Like, I don't even like flying in helicopters. So I'm like, I wouldn't even make it in the helicopter to go to see the aliens. So yeah. it's not in my nature. Yeah. Somebody else can do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who, who would you nominate? To do that? Yeah. Ooh. If, if, if it actually happened. Oh, uh, someone who's not me, someone who's smart, someone like Louise. I would just be like, I would have no clue how to uh, initiate uh, a conversation with, with a being. Yeah, and who would be the worst person that could represent the human race? <laughs> I think we all know what that answer is right now. We're, I'm just not going to say it. <laughs> we all, we all like, we all cumulatively, like, everyone gets quiet. We all know. This is first ay, ay, ay. <laughs> what are we going to do? It's the first name that jumps into everyone's head, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Not going to say it. <laughs> okay, cool. So how, so how are you going to be spending? Did you get any downtime whilst you're here? Um, I was just saying that, that uh, the wonderful thing about Italy is, is even just a meal feels like downtime because it's, it's such, it's such a, wonderful, um, a wonderful attention to detail in, in the food. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the time. All right.